Welcome back to my kitchen where everything is scratch made and home preserved. I'm Jenny. If you're new here, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. It's dinner time and tonight I am be doing a meatloaf and this is an all-in-one meatloaf casserole. So meatloaf and potato casserole. This is something I used to make a lot when the kids were young. Feeds a lot of people, kind of keeps your portions in control and um, it's just delicious. So pull a chair up to my counter and let's get started. Okay, so I'm going to get my meatloaf going first, or get it made and get it into the pan. That is a pound of ground beef I just pulled out of the freezer and let it defrost this morning. Two eggs. And you can really make your meatloaf any way you like it. A couple of dashes of Worcestershire. And instead of breadcrumbs, Today we're doing Cheez-Its. Have you ever used Cheez-Its in your um, meatloaf? It's delicious. So this is the last quarter of the box here, so I'm just going to press it up. I am going to put a quarter cup, a half and half, on my Cheez-Its to get them moist. I've got some fresh parsley already chopped, so I'm going to go ahead and throw that in. A couple teaspoons. A tablespoon of Dijon mustard. I'm going to use a couple tablespoons of freeze-dried onions. Three. I am going to put fresh onions on top of it, between that and the tomato, or that and the potato, not tomato. Um, but for it to hold together, I'm going to use the dry. Two teaspoons of garlic powder. Teaspoon and a half of salt. I'm going to do about a half a teaspoon of black pepper and two teaspoons of onion powder. And that's all I'm going to do for my meatloaf. I consider that pretty plain. While I get this mixed up, here's my 9 by 13 pan. Okay, so this is the way that we are going to put this one in. We'll make a thinner loaf of meat. Luna! No. Okay. Cheddar cheese inside the meat would be really good also. Um, or you could do some Parmesan. You could do more Italian flavor in there if you like. Even though this is going to be a casserole, I'm still going to do my topping. So I'm going to be using some jalapeno ketchup. Because we like a little spice in our life. And I'm going to use a couple tablespoons oops, of barbecue sauce. I'm adding a little extra pepper to it, and I'm going to add a tablespoon of brown sugar. You can use just plain ketchup if you want. Um, it is important though because it gives it flavor between the meat layer and the potato layer. It's delicious. I'm going to chop an onion and I'm going to sprinkle it over the top. You miss how we put onion on everything. 
This is quite a big onion, so I'm going to go ahead and chop it in half, half and do half. I'm out of room in this kitchen, in case you're wondering why I'm using my stove to prepare everything <laughs> and to cut it up. Got canning projects going on. I've got freezer prep. Ridiculous around here. Okay, I'm going to sprinkle extra onions. Again, this isn't something you have to do, especially if you don't love onions. Uh, I throw a handful of raw onions into my potatoes usually after I mash them. Because my husband loves that. So... Okay, there's my half an onion. I am going to go ahead and put this into the oven on 350 and I'm going to bake this until the meat is done. So 45 minutes ish. And then while this is baking, I'm going to just going to boil some potatoes in a pan and then get them mashed up. So I'll bring you back when my potatoes are cooked. Okay, my potatoes are done. You can do your potatoes any old way you like them. I'm going to put salt, that's about a tea. I'm going to put a half a teaspoon of onion powder, about a half a teaspoon of black pepper, about two ounces of cream cheese, a half a stick of butter for now. I might put more in in a minute, we'll see. And then I'm just going to use a masher. You can put it in your mixer and whip your potatoes if you want to do that. My husband actually prefers slightly lumpy potatoes. Yes! And then I'm going to get out some cream here. I'm going to call that good enough for mashing. I'm just using some half and half, but you can use heavy cream, you can use milk. Um, also, I, I like to use um, evaporated milk in mashed potatoes. You want these to be a spreadable consistency, so they need to be a little bit thinner. You don't want them super thick. We are going to spread this over our meatloaf. Our meatloaf looks like right now. You can also put your vegetable in first if you want to do green beans or corn or carrots. You can sprinkle that over the top of the meatloaf. And then spread your potatoes over that. I'm going to do corn on the side, actually. Angel face. And then top the entire thing with cheddar. Well, you don't have to use cheddar if you don't like it. I'm using extra sharp cheddar, but you can use whatever kind of cheese you like. Just shred it. Okay, I am going to put this right back into the oven at 350 degrees for about another 15 minutes to melt the cheese, um, get the potatoes kind of baked a little bit. Again, to make it all in one, put your vegetable between the potato and beef layer. But that way it kind of stays all together cohesive into a mashed potato and meatloaf. Okay, and here it is out of the oven. Still sizzling. This is kind of a nice version of meatloaf if you're trying to um, portion control. I know for me, <laughs> it's a little easier for me to portion control. But your 
meatloaf and potatoes all in one. This was actually a favorite among the kids. It was their favorite meatloaf. All right, that's all there is to the meatloaf casserole. It is super delicious and still a favorite. We love it. If you enjoyed the video, and I hope you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet and you like videos like these, please consider subscribing. You can find me on Instagram at JennyGoff18. I'm also on Facebook, and you can visit my blog at JennyGoff.com for all of my recipes, including this one. I will put the link in the description box below for you. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.